Hi, it's Robert Mitchell, and I just wanted to give a little context to this interview. It was December 2008. I was living in Toronto, and one night I was eating dinner, and I received a phone call from a promoter that I knew. He simply asked, would I be interested in interviewing Guar that night? Well, the answer was yes, of course I'd be interested in interviewing Guar that night. So I ran out to the streetcar, and on the ride over to the opera house, I began to formulate questions. And what makes this interview very special for me is I initially thought I would be interviewing Odorus Urungus uh, because Dave Brocky very rarely was interviewed outside of the character. And after the concert and backstage, uh, it was a huge surprise and a great honor to be able to interview Dave Brocky, the musician and the lead vocalist and founder of Gore. It's helped Dan Hindered, you know. Uh, at the very beginning, we were very, very solid. Well, actually, for the first record, it was just like it was a joke record. We didn't know that it was ever going to do anything more than one record. So, you know, that was kind of what we expected. Then on Scum Dogs, our second record, we definitely solidified, and you know, we're, we're a serious group. But that lineup only lasted for two records. Uh, we were very strong. We totally made our bones as like you know one of the burgeoning metal acts of the day. But after America must be destroyed. We really kind of started going through a phase where we didn't really have the same lineup on any one album. And it wasn't really until we started going more back to the metal on the last few albums that uh, we really, I don't know, started getting our shit back. So it's, you know, I, I'd have to say, yeah, I, all the different people we've had in our band has definitely been a, a positive thing, even though, you know, You'd like to keep everybody there forever, but you can't. There's just, you know, this is a tough, this is not an easy band to be in. So, you know, I'm very grateful to any, any service that anyone's ever given Guar, definitely. Well, you know, I just, I'm just a rocker, you know. I started out into heavy metal when I was a little kid, and then uh, I got into punk rock. I mean, I, I saw the Bad Brains in 1979 at the 930 Club. I'm 45 years old now. I came up through the hardcore scene. Uh, it, then, you know, I kind of burned all my metal records. But then, uh, when uh, bands like Slayer, Metallica, and Rigor Mortis fucking uh, started making metal cool again, I kind of got back into it. And uh, you know, now there's, there's just so many forms of heavy music. I'm just kind of into all of it. Everything from Rammstein to fucking, you know, the Butthole Surfers to Black Flag. You know. I, but I really think a lot of the best heavy bands are kind of the older ones, you know, and, and kids are like reinventing those old bands over and over again, which is cool and is, is, is every bit as important for them, but I have a smug amount of uh, happiness in myself that I was around, you know, to see the first GBH tour, to see the Bad Brains before HR went insane, you know, to see Black Flag when Henry was with them for the first time. But who is Chuck Mosley? Chuck Mosley. Do you remember Chuck Mosley? I don't even Faith remember him. Well, he played in oh, the more. He was the first. Was he the first singer? He was the first singer. He's yeah. The guy that got booted out for falling asleep in front of thirty thousand people. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I actually saw the. Uh, I saw that tour. It was uh, the Express Yourself tour. It was introduce yourself. No, introduce yourself, and they did yeah. that song. We care a lot. We care a lot. We care a lot. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. But Mike Patton was, was awesome. Yeah, great band. Definitely. Uh, Yvonka. How would you explain Can you come the uh, for draw of Guar after all these years? I was here tonight, I saw a lot of young children. Yeah, we really, it's amazing. We have a, a, a demographic unlike anything else. People of all ages really love Guar. And I think it's because Guar's always remained current, always remained awesome. You know, we're always very heavy. We're always very uh, political. 
Um, we're always very funny. We don't take ourselves too seriously, but anyone who sees our show knows we take it very seriously because it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to make this happen. I don't think anybody who sees what Guar does could deny to themselves that we are probably some of the most motivated, motivated artists out there. I mean, obviously we're not doing it for the money, because we've been doing it for 24 years and we're still a bunch of broke motherfuckers. You've come a long way <laughs> since the, the Hello Tour. Oh, sure. I mean, we've definitely, every year with Guar has gotten a little bit better. And that's like the, the, the funniest thing about it. It's just like every year they, they throw us another carrot or so. And, uh, you know, I, I really have to make myself believe that it's just, we're going to wear people down and sooner or later people are just going to go, I give up. Take over, Guar. Well, but a lot of that money you're making from CDs and touring goes right back into the tours. I mean, oh yeah, we we absolutely amazing. We we dump a lot of the shit back into the band, and uh, you know we try to pay ourselves and we try to be good about that stuff. But uh, you know, yeah, Mo Guar eats a lot, and we basically it eats money. We have to we pour we shovel money into a big flaming pit, and that's how we get out on the road. We were bored as shit. We were like, you know, we kind of come through the hardcore thing and uh, the, the metal thing really hadn't started yet. And uh, and we were just basically like, if we were going to go see a band tonight, what would be our favorite band to go see? And we just let our imaginations run amok. Well, and we were just be? like, well, what shit. Be? Well, it was going to be a bunch of flesh-eating monsters from outer space who played really obnoxious metal and were uh, dedicated to destroying the human race. And, uh, I get that too. But... And we were just like, well, let's just do it ourselves. So we just came up with Guar. So all these years of grinding out tour after tour, album after album, what keeps you guys going after all these years? Uh, I think always the, the first of all, just the fact that we, yeah, the fact that the, we are able to support ourselves. I mean, when I was a kid, I was always just, I didn't know what kind of art I was going to end up doing, but I was, you know, if I was able to pay my bills as an artist, I'd be happy. I've been able to do that now for 24 years. But, you know, we're not getting rich off this shit, but we're definitely surviving. And I guess always the promise that it could get bigger at any at any moment that it could that really guar could be a band that lasts forever you know we have a lot more to do with Beatlemania than the beatles you know we could continue you know we can breed replacements i've always said that guar is a band that could last a thousand years you know i know hitler said that about the third reich but i might be right <laughs>